PDP National Chairman Yocha Yu reacts to recent suspension by party ex coach saying it is an exercise in futility. Even as the governor of River State near some weekly back suspension, saying are you contributed to the PDP's loss in the just concluded elections. Tonight, we discuss the PDP crisis which is lingering even after the 2023 presidential and governorship elections. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyam Guru. I guide you. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Yocha Yu, has dismissed his purported suspension by a section of his ward executive over alleged anti-party activities as the handiwork of some desperate, ignorant gamblers who lack basic understanding of the PDP constitution. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Dr. Yocha Yu, was suspended by the executive for alleged anti-party activities. The suspension of Dr. Yu was affected by the or affected rather by the ward executive of the party in Igorov, Igorov ward of Boko local government area, uh, Benwe State. Meanwhile, Governor Yesom Wike of River State has said he is in support of the suspension of the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Iocha Ayu. Wike stated that Ayu played a major role in the colossal failure of the PDP in 2023 general elections. When joining us to discuss this is uh, later on, we'll be, we will be joined by Chidi Lloyd, Chairman Emoha Local Government Area of River State. But right now, we have on standby Ose Aneni, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you, Ose, for joining us on the program. Yeah, glad to be here as always. Okay, uh, well, PDP uh, is now becoming synonymous with. Uh, Crisis before the election, there was crisis. Even though the party was denying it, that there was no crisis, and they were going into the part into the election as one undivided uh, house. Uh, right now, after the election, and what uh, the governor of River State is calling a colossal failure, there still seems to be another crisis wherein the national chairman has been suspended. We'd like to get your comments on that first of all before we move on. Um, I, I think if you have a headache and you don't treat it or you don't treat the source of a problem, it's no surprise if the, the problem persists. Um, we have some people within the party who have unfortunately decided to play um, you know, almost like an antagonistic role. And um, that wasn't treated before the elections. That persisted during the elections. And that's what we're seeing play out today. Mm. Okay, uh, well, before we go on, let's just take a listen to what uh, the governor of River State said. And when we return, there are other issues that we need to look at. For instance, what the Constitution mm. says or what the uh, PDP believes should be this, the steps to take before someone can be suspended. Because there are so many things coming from this case that we are handling today. So let's listen to the governor of River State and his comments on the suspension. Not only did you take a distant turn in the presidential election in your state, you also lost the, the, the states as for the governorship election. And they know the antics of Ayu. You know, if you know Ayu very well, he has told us before now that he is very close to the president elect, Benaswaji Bola Tribu. He also claims that he is very close. To the presidential candidate of uh, PDP. So, whoever that emerges, whoever that wins, he has nothing to lose. He said that? Yes. Let him tell me that he never said so. Is it wrong to be close to both of them? No, that's not what the point I'm making. The point is that who is that attached to? If this person wins, it's okay. If this person wins, it's okay. How can such person be the leader of the party? Are you behind the suspension? I'm in support of the suspension. In fact, if Ayu had left before now, they would have said he left and that was why PDP failed the election. But thank God, he presided over the colossal failure of the party. And so staying there doesn't make sense again. You have to look for a way how the party can be rebuilt. 
and that is true to the matter. Okay, we are hearing like uh, the voice of the G5. Uh, that, uh, that's what I'd like to say because Wike was leading the G5, the governors who said that uh, uh, whatever you was doing was wrong, unconstitutional and all. But we don't know what the constitution of the PDP actually says. For instance, people from the ward of Iocha Ayu have suspended Iocha Ayu. He came out to say it's an exercise in futility even though right now the court, the high court in Benue State has barred him from parading himself as the national chairman of the PDP. What does the constitution of the PDP actually say about how or the steps that need to be taken before someone can be suspended from the party? Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I always like giving a historical background of of things um, so people understand the journey and where we are today. Um, the PDP, when it was formed in 1998, I, you know, I, I never tell saying it was formed in the backdrop of the military. Abacha had just died, there was a transition government. So, very quickly, a set of uh, individuals, the G34 at the time, um, you know, formed the core of a, of a party that eventually became the PDP. And so we had a, a constitution form, at, you know, written at that time that was literally just a ticket, a transitionary ticket from military rule to civilian rule. It was what allowed us to conduct our congresses, and it was a very imperfect document. I have every single copy of every single amendment we have made since that time. Um, I have three of them here. We have the 2001 amendment, I think, if I can find it. Um, this was it. And what was, what, was, what was interesting about this 2001 amendment is that it sort of introduced the idea that um, the BOT chairman would be reserved for the president. At the time, remember, Abbasanjo had tried his third term bid. It wasn't successful. And so this amendment was almost like a, a soft landing for him. They reserved the chairmanship of the BOT to um, for former presidents. Then fast forward to 20, 2014, we have the 2012 amendment. That's this document here. Mm. And President Jonathan was moving up against the governors at the time who wanted him to hold on to the purported agreement he had that he would only run one term in 2011. And so with Bamanga Tuko, the then national chairman, they introduced into the National um, Executive Committee of the party, the NEC, um, not just the governors and former heads of state, it was also uh, senators and House of Rep members. They expanded the neck so that the governors wouldn't have such a strong chokehold over the party. Which brings me to the most, rec the most recent, recent amendment we have, which is this amendment. It's the uh, Secondus Amendment. And, you know, what is interesting about this one, because we have had instances where um, party chairman would be removed, and then a, a, a new party chairman from another zone would assume a leadership of the party. This amendment says, you know, introduce what we call two deputy national chairmen. So you have deputy cha national chairman North and deputy na national chairman South. So whoever the national chairman is, if he's removed, it will be the deputy national chairman from his zone, either North or South, that replaces him. And that sort of was supposed to cure that loss of representation if the national chairman is removed. But I've spoken very quickly about three different manifestos I think uh, I showed you just now. Mm. Every single one of them has one thing in particular, in, in common, two things in, 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 in common. They penalize anti-party activities and they defined it. So if I go to the most recent amendment, Anti-party is it says there's a penalty saying is it's twelve six. No member of the party shall align with any other party or group to undermine the party or any of its elected governments. That's that's one clause. But more importantly, and I think more relevant um, to your question, it talks about how you discipline members of um, NWC, how you dis discipline members of NEC, how you discipline the leadership of the party at the national level. One thing politicians will always do is protect their interests. So every single copy of the Constitution as amended has this interesting clause, and I'll read it to you. 
it says, this is now the most recent one, uh, 57.7, notwithstanding any other provision relating to discipline, no executive committee at any level except the National Executive Committee shall entertain any question of discipline as may relate or concern a member of the National Executive Committee, deputy governors, or members of the National Assembly. So to answer your question um, straightforward, can people at the world level wake up in the middle of the night and get a few, few members to, um, to attach their signatures to a document purporting to remove or suspend the national chairman? This constitution that I've just read is a publicly available document says you cannot do that. The problem is that, um, and I talked about, you know, people in the party who sort of act in an antagonistic role. The problem is that there are people in the party who do not care about the constitution, who do not appear to care about the rule of law. Because if you recall, this has happened before. This was the same thing that happened in 2021, I think, with our chairman at the time, Secundus, where again, in River State, some people at the world level uh, claimed to have removed him. And then, you know, in quick fire succession, a court injunction, an ex parte injunction was procured um, that again restrained him from parading himself. And that's the language they use parading himself as a national chairman. And it's, it's, it's illegal, it's unconstitution, unconstitutional, but it's a distraction because once you procure a court, judge, court judgment, that then becomes, becomes law. And so you can maybe, um, you know, bad faith actors will always be bad faith actors. But what rose out of the 2021 episode in August was that in a week, three ex parte injunctions were procured, were, were obtained. One restrained um, the chairman from presenting himself as national chairman from Rivers. A few days later, another one I think was gotten from Kebi that vacated that first injunction. And then another one was gotten maybe from Kano, I think he was, that again restrained the national chairman, Secundus, from presenting himself as chairman. And um, one of the things that um, the former chief justice of Nigeria did at the time was that he took a very tanko, he took a very hard stance against these procurements of ex parte motions and injunctions and foreign uh, forum shopping. And those three judges were actually sanctioned by, by the judiciary. So it, it, it's sort of dis disappointing that two years later we are seeing these same um, actors come out and roll out the same script and the judiciary is allowing itself to be complicit in a in a in a in a theatrical state that that really is a road to nowhere so to answer your question our, our constitution doesn't support these actions but they have backed an illegality with uh, an ex parte um, injunction procured from a pliant judge okay um just before we've been joined by chidi lloyd right now but just before we go to him i'd just like to get some clarification you've talked about the fact that uh, no even what esco can or even the state ESCO can, uh, can, can initiate any disciplinary action on uh, a member of the National Working Committee. Okay, that is, that is understandable. But what steps should be taken to discipline a member of the National Working Committee who is not doing what he's supposed to do at the what level? For instance, if the allegations leveled against are you at the what level, uh, are true, what can be done about that? Will they, will they, will they, what exco just sit and fold its arms and start complaining to the National Working Committee? What can they do to be proactive enough to make sure that it doesn't happen? Some of the allegations that they said was, were that um, Ayu does not pay dues at the world level. He's a member of the National Working Committee. They also said that his aides voted against the PDP in his ward. They also said that uh, Ayu did not even vote in the last election and he lost his word. So if these things were th true, they are very weighty allegations, what is the National Working Committee supposed to do? What is the what uh, Exco supposed to do at that moment? Should they just leave things lie because he's bigger than them? What disciplinary actions should be taken by the National Working Committee? 
Um, again, I, I need to stress this point that, you know, as a society, we have to be governed by laws and we have to respect our laws, whether we agree with them or not. And you ask a question that, again, I just need to refer you to our constitution because it does answer that question. It says, nothing in this constitution shall preclude or invalidate any complaint submitted through the National Working Committee to the National Executive Committee concerning any person or any official whatsoever. So there's a process for addressing those grievances embedded and coded in this constitution. Uh, I think what, what has just happened, like I said, it's, you know, um, most of these people know this constitution by heart. Uh, most of them have been members of this party since its inception in 1998. Um, this is, like I said, just a distraction. It, it, it just is to just continue and attempt to continue to, like you said, so um, trouble within the party and keep us from really, really addressing the things we need to do. You know, it's curious to me, um, you know, because you kept on referencing Governor Wiki. Here, Governor Wiki talk about supporting um, the suspension of IU because IU works for Tinubu. When Governor Wiki and his um, co-travelers have come out publicly to say they are proud that they worked for the Tinubu presidency. They are proud that they worked for Obi. They have come out to, to, to proclaim this. So I don't understand. There's sort of a dissonance. Either they are supporting, working against the party, or they are not. And regardless of their feelings, they cannot take the laws into their own hands. We have a constitution, um, and, I, and, I, and I think they need, to, they, they need to abide by it. I'm a member of a, of a group who just formed all the leadership league, and it's a collection of young um, members of the party who are truly tired of, of coming on these types of spaces to make apologies for the bad behavior of our leaders. And, and I think it's time we start speaking truth to these leaders and maybe start um, putting forward a new uh, breed of, of, of leadership that is more reflective of the aspirations of Nigerians. I don't think they have learned the lessons of the, of the just concluded elections. I don't think that they are aware that Nigerians are tired of this style of opposition or tired of this farcical drama that will come out to play almost every day on national television. Um, I think Nigerians deserve better. We are hoping to provide better for Nigerians. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Like I did say, we have been joined by Chidi Lloyd, Chairman Emoha Local Government Area of River State. Good evening, uh, Honorable. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. Can you hear me? Okay, it seems he cannot hear me. And uh, as soon as he's able to uh, join us fully, we'll bring him back on. So um, let me come back to you, Ose. Uh, you, you touched on some things that, uh, that were supposed to be my next question. And that is the fact that someone like Wiki, Governor Wiki of River State, has clearly told us that he worked for the opposition in some quarters. The governor of Benue State also clearly worked for the opposition. Even if he didn't work for the opposition, he aligned, that's the word you used when you were talking about your constitution, he aligned with the opposition because he said he loved, for instance, the uh, Labour Party presidential candidate so much so that he doesn't even mind or didn't even mind losing his uh, senatorial ambition for, for him. And we're wondering why uh, Iocha Ayu is working anti-party when the people who have publicly proclaimed have not been suspended as well. Why is Wiki <laughs> not even invited? Why is Wiki not facing the disciplinary uh, committee, as it were? Uh, why is Ayu just, just referred to the disciplinary committee and then Anyim Pius Anyim has been suspended and... Uh, uh, some other people. So what is going on in the PDP? Do we have a uh, selective discipline <laughs> in the PDP? Um, that, that's a brilliant question. Um, and that's one of the grounds, um, you know, I have and the Leadership League have with the current NWC. There seems to be an, a selective application of, of justice with regards to disciplining erring leaders who clearly come out on national television to say that they are working against the party and will continue to work against the party's interest. 
uh, people like Ayim, like you said, who came out to justify why he worked against the party in the states. People like Fayoshe, who came out to say he's with Kenobu and he's with uh, San Wolu and he has no no regards. Um, I, I think there is. I think there, sh there should be a there should be a question of of integrity uh, posed to the integrity group. If you 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 do not agree with you know, an organization or, an, or the leadership of an organization, and you cannot find legal ways to change it. The honorable thing to do is to resign, is to step away, to distance yourself from that organization. It's not to stay in as a more and as a saboteur and be acting in this, this, this honorable manner. It's not something I would do. If I have a problem in the party um, and I disagreed with it fundamentally, I would walk away. Um, but specifically to go, uh, Governor Wicked, and, and I think why he hasn't been sanctioned, is because um, I think he realized the gravity of his offenses, uh, and he went to get uh, an injunction restraining the party from suspending or disciplining him. And Governor Autumn, I think, did the same thing. And some of the other people who, who have been suspended, like Fayoshe, uh, Chemaroke, and Ayin, um, did not get court court order restraining the party from disciplining them. You know, so I see a lot of bravado and bluster on television. And and I think if, if you think the party is truly powerless to censor you or discipline you, then set the, the court orders aside and let's see whether the party is truly toothless. But personally, I think the more honorable path to take instead of conflict is to just step away from the party, uh, hold your head up high and walk into... Uh, APC or Labour Party's uh, national headquarters and join them as a member. That to me is more honourable than the shenanigans currently playing out within the party. Okay, I, I think J.D. Lloyd has joined us now. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, good evening and welcome to Plus Politics. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. Yeah. Okay, we couldn't get you first of all, but now I'm glad that we can get you now. Uh, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're discussing what is happening in the PDP, how the ward exco expelled or suspended uh, the national chairman, Ayu. The national chairman is also saying that's an exercise in futility. The high court in Benway has said that he should not parade himself anymore as the national uh, chairman of the PDP. And then there is the constitution of the PDP saying that nobody can discipline him because he belongs to the National Working Committee. And so many things are happening in the PDP. We saw this uh, before the election, and it seems to be a deja vu. And like the governor of River State said, uh, because of these problems, there was a monumental failure of the, the, the party. That's how he described it. I, I, don't, I don't know how much better it would have been. But what does this say about the PDP? Is, it, is the PDP a party without laws, or the PDP is just a party that is dying? Well, thank you very much for this question. I'd like to uh, first say that the PDP is greater than any individual, be it national chairman, deputy national chairman, or governor of any state. Because the PDP has the constitution that governs the conduct of its members. And of course, this constitution of the party uh, flows from the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the ground norm uh, and the source of every other constitution or laws in the country. Uh, when you look at what is going on, uh, for instance, in, in Benue State, uh, where the World ESCO has suspended the national chairman, uh, that is the right way to go. I'm not looking at the, 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 the merits or the, 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 the events that led to that. Uh, it's only the Benue people, like the World ESCO, that can speak to that. Uh, he was uh, he was being accused of not being able to deliver his unit. And I've asked my friends, what does unit mean, a pulling unit? Is that unit that is in front of your house, or probably uh, at, the, at, at, at the primary school in your community, not in any other community? And a politician of that, that ranking should be able to, without much ado, deliver his unit. Uh, and a man like uh, Senator Yajua, you cannot be quarantined to delivering his unit. 
he should actually deliver his state and deliver the deliver his political party uh, uh, in, 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 in any elections. Uh, so, the World Esco has facts upon which they have acted, and I hear that the, that the High Court in Benue has also uh, uh, given an order restraining the national chairman from parading himself as national chairman. Then I saw on a news bar of a, of a TV station other than yours that the national chairman has said that it is only the national executive committee of the party that can remove him. I, and I, I know that Senator Yachua, you would not have made that statement. That statement may have been credited to him in error. The, 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 we are told that every judgment of court, every decision of court, every order of court, no matter how worthless it may seem, must be obeyed until a court, a superior court, says otherwise. So that's why I know that uh, Senator Yotra Ayo, having been a lecturer in the University of uh, Joss and the one time Senate president, could not have said that uh, uh, the, the order of a high court uh, it does not apply to him. Uh, that is calling for anarchy. And so the people have think all he will do is to go to court and challenge uh, 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 the decision of the court rather than saying that the court cannot do anything to him. I do not think that is the way to go. Okay, but the, there is this matter of the constitution, the PDP constitution, which states that actually uh, the word exco cannot do that if the person that is in question is a part of the National Working Committee. That is according to your constitution. No, no, and then, and then let me just let me just finish. And then we have this example of uh, uh, so, uh, the the secretary to the federation. Uh, who was also removed by his ward, but the National Working Committee of his party overruled, and then he, he was retained. So do, does the ward exco really have that power, even as the Constitution says they don't well, have, well, to remove let, him? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me quickly say this. The Constitution of the All Progressive Congress uh, is not the same, may not be the same with the Constitution of the People's Democratic Party. So when you make reference quickly or hastily to what happened between the the uh, the party at the at the at the level of uh, the world in the case of the secretary to government, uh, you may be doing so hastily. Try and find out. Yes, the PDP constitution the says the working national working committee members cannot be disciplined by quote, anybody else the section, except the national working committee. I'd like you to. I'd like you to refer me to the section. You see, it is not enough to come on a TV program and try to bamboozle people. Can you tell me section D of the PDP Constitution says? You recall, you recall that the, 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 the ultimate power lies with the, with the Executive Council of the Committee at the, at the, at the world level. You recall that uh, in the case of Oshomole, that is what ESCO, when Oshomole was the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, he took his word to expel him from the party. So why are you doing cherry picking? Okay. You cannot do cherry picking. Okay. So you referred me to the case of the SGF. I have also referred you to the case of uh, Adam Oshomole, who was suspended by his word. Mm. Okay. You get the point. Okay. So at, at this point, what one would say, ordinarily, it, the senator Yachayu shouldn't even have waited for his word to take this decision for leading the for leading the party into this shameful defeat. Senator Yachayu ought to have done the needful by honorably resigning as national chairman. Okay. That is what every. Every every same person would have done. Now to stay put, it was this the same character, the same attitude of wanting to stay put that led to the crisis that that we have in the political party, where people are so much attached to political offices as of, in, 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 in defense of, of of the good of the majority. A party goes into an election 
without five, gov five of these governors. And you say, to hell with them, we will win. And here we are. Here we are, they've won. How can you, no matter what it takes, you have not been able to settle your... We went into this election fragmented. All those who, some of those who voted for PTP are people who, ought to, who would have voted for the PDP. Some of those who voted for Rabi Ubangwaso are people who would have voted for the PDP. As if that is not enough, five governors says they have an issue and you, you refuse to listen. You arrogantly carried on. And this is what has happened. When even those who were urging and stoking this fire, we are, we are shocked that they could not even deliver their, their, their units. So you can, you can see what, what, what arrogance can lead to in, 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 a, in, a, in an organization. People must learn to stoop to conquer. Okay. All right. Uh, well, gentlemen, we will just take a short break. And when we return, we'll answer some of the questions that we've posed to ourselves right now. So just a brief break now. We'll come back in a moment. You're welcome back. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa, and my name is Nyamgul Agadji. We're talking about the suspension of uh, the chairman, the national chairman of PDP, and what is happening within the PD uh, PDP. Is PDP uh, respecting its laws or not? Is PDP heading for the rocks or not? We're just looking at this, and we're talking with uh, uh, Chidi Lloyd, chairman, Emoha local government area of River State, and Ose Aneni, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party. So, in this second half of, of this match, as it were, uh, I'm starting with you, Ose. Um, earlier on, before Chiri joined us, uh, you read from the constitution of the People's Democratic Party. In fact, you had three copies of that, three amendments of the constitution. You had the uh, 2001, you had 2012, you had uh, the, maybe 1998 or something, and you were mm. telling us the things that were inside that. And you said that nobody, according to the Constitution, can discipline a member as high-ranking as a member of the National Working Committee. And Chidi differed a little bit. Are we operating on two PDP constitutions here? Or you care to shed more light on what you told us earlier on that the word exco were not right or was not right to suspend your child. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll forgive my brother, uh, Chidi Lloyd. I think he's a barrister, so his lack of grasp of our constitution was a bit surprising. Um, I, will, I will maybe explain it away because I think he was with the APC um, and joined us from, from the APC to the PDP. So maybe that's why he is really, really familiar with the APC constitution and has no idea of what the PDP constitution um, contains. And for his benefit, because I've done this for viewers, viewers before, this is the PDP's current constitution. I have several other copies of the PDP constitution here that contain the same provision I'm going to read. Um, it is... 5710 in chapter 10 of our 577 in chapter 10 of our disciplinary uh, procedures. And let me read for his benefit. It says, notwithstanding any other provision relating to discipline, no exec executive committee at any level except the National Executive Committee shall entertain any question of discipline as may relate or concern a member of the National Executive Committee, Deputy Governors, or members of the National Assembly, provided that nothing in this Constitution shall preclude or invalidate any complaint submitted through the NWC to the National Executive Committee concerning any person whatsoever. So it's interesting when you hear my brother talk about the PDP being, you know, an, an, a body of laws, which we are, but he then comes on here to say that what the word people have done is right and is good and he endorses it and his governor endorses it. And if we don't like it, we should go to court. And Nigerians will recognize, you know, again, just from our recently concluded election, what go to court means. It's, it's the language of the APC. It's the language of somebody who feels you will not get justice when you go to church because maybe 
when they go to court because maybe they feel they control the judiciary. So it's very disappointing when I hear that type of language from my brother, who doesn't know our constitution, and then comes on national television to embarrass himself and embarrass the party. I frankly am ashamed that we are, again, this happened in 2021. So it's not, it's not new for us. We went through this song and dance with Secundus. It was the same thing. They suspended him illegally at the world level. They procured a court injunction, and they did this. You know, they distracted us until we held our Congress, and they brought in Ayu. By their own confession, they brought in this chairman. And then because they're unhappy with the way things are turning out, they want to again revisit the illegality of 2021, and again illegally suspend him from the ward, and they have run to court again, and they're once again telling us to go to court. It truly is disappointing. When I hear my brother talk about, you know, the party was fractured, that's why we lost. That's not true. We lost because of them. They fractured the party. Wiki is on, is, is on record as Umahi, in fact, went to Rivers today, I think he was, to say Wiki drove him out of the party. They quarreled. That's why they left. Obi left the party because of Wiki. Ayade left the party because of Wiki. And they were talking about an arrogance and that the party doesn't belong to any one man. That isn't what is playing out now. The concept being playing out now is one person wants to control the party, and the party, a national party, is fighting back. And I truly am, again, I am embarrassed and I am ashamed that my brother is coming out to defend this type of illegality. We need to be better. We need to be better if we want to provide the type of opposition that Nigeria leads. Let us forget that they have afflicted Nigerians with another eight years of APC, God forbid that they win their court case. Let us forget that. Let us, let us assume we are going to be in the opposition. We need to provide a, a, a better level of opposition. And it cannot be about this brigandage. It, it cannot be. I truly am appealing to my brother. Sometimes you want to come on this type of shows. Stay away. Don't come and defend the indefense. This is our constitution. You guys are flouting it, and you are endorsing that illegality. I, I cannot get my head around it. I truly cannot get my head around it. If you want me to, Lloyd, I will send you a copy of this constitution. Okay. I, um, I don't understand what, what is going on. Okay, let, let, me, let me get a response from Mr. Lloyd right now. If you have uh, what to respond before we move on to other things, uh, do you have a response, please? Now, now I have patiently listened to Jose. And I want to, I want to believe that Jose is the son of the late Tony Anedi. His father will probably would have been turning in his grave that he has a son of this nature. You look at me on the national TV and you say you are ashamed. You are entitled to your own views. I don't say it is people like you that cause the party this type of embarrassment. I was a member. I was I was elected into the River State House of Assembly in 2003 under the platform of the, all, the People's Democratic Party. I was a member of the River State House of Assembly back to back for 12 years. You know nothing about politics. Other than to carry on as a man, with, as the son of the late Chief Tony Anini, you couldn't even deliver your unit. And you, st you stand, you stay in that studio to spill rubbish on the chairman of council who delivered this party. You know, it's so, it's so shameful. And I, I, I have been listening attentively, thinking that the producer of this program will quickly call you to order. You are showing me three versions of the constitution that you have read. Okay, let's even assume, do not consider that the, 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 the ESCO at the world level have acted or traversed their powers. They, they, are you also denying that the High Court in, in Magode has restrained the, the national chairman from parading himself? I think it is you as should that actually be ashamed of that you have led this party that people labored for when you were all on vacation and doing your businesses in Dubai and other um, parts of the country. Okay, Mr. Lord. Nobody, no, just a moment. No, listen to me. Listen to me. Just a moment, let Mr. Lloyd. While you're, while you're no saying that, I, 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 I don't intend to stop you, but uh, let me just ask you this so that you add it to your. No, no, no. And it is even you can add it to the, the you. answer that and you're giving. You have let me just. To be on this program only for you for, to bring a somebody here to embarrass me. And you have. You have let me, me ask you this. Program. You can add that to your answer, please. I'm not stopping you from answering anything, anyhow. You want to say it. But I want to just add this to you. Do you have a contrary view? Do you have something that will counter what Mr. Aneni just said? Because if that is the As Constitution and he read it, 
I that means maybe you anything. have something I else said, that will counter it. Do you have? I said, I said, I said that yesterday my attention was drawn to the fact of what the world ESCO did. Mm. And Jose Anini has shown you three versions of the BD, of his own party constitution. PDP. Okay? Since, since I just got back to the party. Now what I'm saying, I said, assuming do not concede it, assuming do not concede it, if that will make any sense to Jose Anene, that the party acted to travail his powers, is he also denying the fact that there is a high court judgment from one of the courts in Benue State, in Makodi, restraining the national chairman. And the national chairman is accredited with saying that only the neck can remove him. And I have told you that no matter how bad a law, a judgment or order of court is, it must be obeyed. If you, if you do anything to the contrary, then you are calling for anarchy. Okay. Uh, well, but how would you how would you describe the actions of uh, your child? You, uh, you know, now we are we are leaving whether it's legal or not legal because we've seen the same actions that he's taking now uh, that led to the formation of the G five as it is and all that. And no matter how weighty he, the accusations against him, he always just writes them off. Nothing will happen. And yes, that is the attitude. And you know, that was the Anene is quick to reminding the public. That he, he just got back to the party. Jose Anini also forgets that the Yotra and I, the Yotra and you and I came back from the APC. So that you know that you now know those who are enemies of the party. Yotra and you, to my mind, from all that is playing out, is actually a mole in the PDP. And the owners of the PDP have said that they cannot abdicate the pulpit to a stranger. No reverend, no preacher abdicates his pulpit to strangers. And because this has happened, the PDP has paid dearly for it. And you come on, on, on national TV and okay. begin to pontificate. Like, I'm not even sure that was Anini voted in this past election. <laughs> okay. Um, now, we are concerned because PDP is the major opposition party. I'm coming to you now, Ose. It's the major opposition party. And they went into the election, no matter the semantics, no matter the, the, the words we are using, they went into this election not as a united front, but, like you say, the fragmented uh, party. Whether you see it from any, any perspective, that's how it was. Now, they have lost. The PDP has lost. And there still is an election in Kebi State and Adamawa State. And these problems are still happening. What do you think... Or what are you doing? Let me not even say what you're thinking. What are you doing as a party to make sure that before this election that is going to hold in April for Kebi and Adamawa, you will go into that election united? It doesn't matter whether it's happening in only two states. Kebi is already an APC state. Adamawa, we thought even Binani had won. Binani is APC. So if you go into this election divided, there's a possibility you will still lose. What are you doing to make sure this doesn't happen? I'm Oste. even very surprised that it is actually... Mm. I was asking us in the sorry, home sorry. state. Sorry. I was asking us there now. It is actually in the home okay. state of the uh, presidential let's, candidate. I was asking us there when it finishes the round of... The presidential let's, candidate let's, let's, let's would have been won at the first, uh, first, uh, first election. Uh, I'm actually very surprised. Okay, I'm asking Ose now. Ose, what are you doing? You say you have a group now and all that, so you are trying to reform the PDP. What are you doing to make sure you go into this election, even though it's happening in two states, as a united front? I mentioned the group is the leadership league, and um, I, I'm happy that people are watching um, this conversation. Uh, one of us represents the old guards, and the other represents... Um, a departure from the status quo and 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 like i said you know we 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 want to be able to you know represent the aspirations of nigeria and that sort of is is where we are going to with regards to the election you have coming up um in in a couple of of of, of days i'll say i think there are several several things that that sort of like play are playing around in our heads First of all is, you know, are we going to have a free and fair contest? One of the reasons, you know, you didn't sort of address it, one of the reasons why we're having supplementary elections is because 
the first round of elections were contested, were disputed, were, were inconclusive. Results were cancelled. Polling results were cancelled. There was violence. Um, there was so much uncertainty. And I think that lies squarely um, on INEC and on the security agencies. So we hope that now where there sort of is going to be a concentration of, of attention on these select polling units and, and wards and local government areas and these two states, um, we'll have a free and fairer contest. Um, I, 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 I am not worried at all that, that we'll win. I think it, it's competitive because we're ahead and these are sort of like uh, last minute uh, decisions or last minute attempts to steal. Yes, um, keep, keep it brief, please. We're wrapping up. Yes. Yeah. Um, but finally, I, I, I do want to say, I think my brother actually Lloyd uh, probably wasn't listening when I said, I talked about two, two things. I said there was an illegality in breaching our constitution and there was, you know, a more, maybe more dangerous uh, procurement of, of expert injunctions from the courts. And I, and, and I concede completely that, you know, if a court has served an expert injunction, we have to uh, okay. abide by it unless we vacate it. That hasn't been done. Um, but again, it, it, it's unfortunate that a court will grant an expert motion when there's no emergency or urgency on the political matter. Okay. Um, a final word from you, Mr. Lloyd, so that we wrap up. Very briefly, please. Well, I'd like to say that uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Osadini would use the word procure. You know, when, when it is so, it's so, it's so sad. It's so sad that Nigerians and somebody like Gozadini will, will procure. When the judgment or order favors you, it is when there is democracy. But I, I don't think that we should, we should do this to our, democr to our judiciary. If you have a case, please you go and ventilate your case. If you have a superior, if a superior argument, table it before his lordships and don't come on public TV to begin to say procure. The judiciary is not a marketplace. The judiciary, the judge, usually is not there when disputes arise. It is what the lawyers tell the judge, what the, the defendants counsel, and what the claimants counsel or applicants counsel tell the judge that the judge will wait the weight of evidence okay. and arrive at a decision. Following precedence, following precedence of what has happened in similar matters. So I do not think that Nigerians should continue to disparage the, the, the judiciary. When, when, when disputes arise, we all run to the judiciary. The president, the, 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 the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the presidential candidate, has run to the courts to seek, to seek, to seek uh, justice. And uh, people like Jose Anini, okay. who are the real enemies of the PDP, are the ones now who are trying to get their lordship angry. Okay by the type of comments they make on national TV. So I wasn't on this program with you today. And I take real exceptions to okay. any, any conduct that will demean our courts. Okay. They, we still have very honorable people who sit on the bench okay. and who will do their work no matter Thank who you. calls this down. Thank you, Mr. You know? Lloyd. Thank so you. please, Jose, let me, let me educate you on that. If Thank you, need you justice, Mr. Lloyd. We really have to lawyers. wrap up right now. Get good lawyers to canvass your case. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lloyd and uh, Mr. Ose and Neni. Uh, we thank you so much for coming on the program. We just hope that uh, be, as Nigerians, we want a good government. We also want a good opposition so that everybody will be on their toes to make our country better. That's all we're asking for. So the PDP being a major, major uh, opposition, please put your acts together, whatever it is, whether it's in the legal way, the moral way, the physical way, however it's going to be done. But we are wishing you luck, and we are hoping this is not the beginning of the end. So, Mr. Uh, Lloyd and Mr. Aneni, thank you for coming on the program. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Talk to, to me. Um, All right. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Chidi Lloyd, Chairman Emoha Local Government Area, River State, and Osea Nini, a chieftain also of the People's Democratic Party on Plus Politics. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.